We have officially been in Vietnam now for almost four weeks and have fallen in love with this country. Everyone in Vietnam is so, so nice. Be sure to check out the rest of our Vietnam series for all of our adventures in Ho Chi Minh, the Mekong River, and Hoi An. We're now going to put a whole month of learning about the Vietnamese cuisine into this video. Oh my god, oh my god. that is delicious. We're going on a food tour in Hanoi and we'll show some of our favorite dishes and some new ones we have yet to try. This place is so popular. There's actually a small takeaway stall just across the street and then a sit down restaurant on the other side. Didn't know if we could come in here or not because there's no sign on this side, but some lady directed us over here. Watermelon juice is in no way unique to Vietnam, but it is on just about every menu in Southeast Asia. And that's because every day it's hot here and this is one of the coldest and most refreshing drinks we've ever come across. It's gotta be ice cold though. So I ordered the grilled chicken and avocado, which I haven't seen avocado on a banh mi sandwich, and I love avocado, so. Mmm, kind of spicy. So the banh mi is probably the most popular Vietnamese dish around the world, maybe at least in the US, and it's a sandwich with chicken and toppings, like fresh veggies, like cucumber, carrots, and this one has avocado, some sort of dressing, and this one is nice and spicy, the chicken is nice and grilled, and the bread's the most important part, and it's flaky, it just falls apart in your mouth. I got the banh mi chow, which I'm just gonna call a deconstructed banh mi sandwich. It's barbecue pork with pork pate, and pate is typically a meat paste with the main component of liver, but since mine is pork, mostly ground pork, I believe, and I have a egg sunny side up because everything, to me at least, is better than egg. I have reconstructed my banh mi sandwich. Mmm, that was the perfect bite, as evidenced by the fact that I ate the whole bite. Shocked even Alicia. But the bread is so crunchy on the outside, soft in the middle, the meats just melt together in your mouth, and the egg, like, is just the perfect addition to that sandwich. That is so good. I think it's better than mine. Fun fact, the banh mi is actually just the bread. It's not the sandwich. So you can have it in a lot of different ways, which is unique in Southeast Asia because bread is not common here. It's really just because of the French colonial times that they brought over bread. Okay. It's a food day. We should probably walk, but we're taking a grab. Unless we can hitch a ride with this guy. Probably could have walked here in the same amount of time, but can't argue with air conditioning, and that was some pretty good music. I'll play one now. We're at our next stop for pho, and we pay before we enter. This place is jamming. Seating here is family style, so you're cozying up to some new neighbors, and this place was full, and then we sat down and everybody left, so I don't know what that says about us. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Pho is another one of those traditional Vietnamese dishes that's known all around the world, and it's really popular in the U.S. right now. So it's traditionally broth, meat, noodles, and herbs, and then they have condiments on the table for you to add to it. The place we're at, Pho Thin, actually does it a little differently. Instead of putting in like raw or undercooked beef so it cooks in the broth like a normal pho, they actually stir fry their beef and garlic before, so it adds like another dimension to the pho, and then we can add all these toppings to it as well. Mm. Right away, you can just taste the garlic in that beef. Just adds so much flavor. We've had a lot of pho so far here in Vietnam, and I think this is my favorite. One thing we talk about every single time we sit down for a meal here is the portion size in Vietnam. It's just crazy. Right now, we're sharing this bowl because we have a lot of food to eat today, but even if we didn't, this would be enough for us to share a bowl of pho because there's just so much of it. It's already noon, but we just finished up breakfast with banh mi and pho, and now we're heading to lunch. Food delivery drivers, always a good sign. Hi. Hi. 
three levels of seating, also a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And when the president of your country eats here, probably the best sign possible. In 2016, Obama ate here with Anthony Bourdain, and they're not shy about telling you here. They preserved the table that those two ate at, they're on the hand wipes, and they're on the menu. We are at Bun Cha Huang Lin. I know I'm saying that wrong, and there's a lot of locals around me, so it's really embarrassing. And although we didn't order the combo Obama, we did order a few similar dishes. We are getting full. It's only halfway through our food tour, so we're trying to pace ourselves. We ordered the Bun Cha, which is a very popular dish. It's pork and pork balls over rice noodles. And then we ordered some crab fried spring rolls, which are called Nem Hua Bi, I think. <laughs> and beer. To Cheers to Obama. Mm. The pork is cut so thin. It's so crispy because it's been like charcoal barbecued. And it's just like smoke and barbecue flavor in your mouth. It is delicious. Fried crab roll time. And I'm so nervous to drop this on the ground that I have a plate to catch me. It's delicious. It's very crispy on the outside, and the crab has a very nice butter flavor to it. Plus, they're nice and small. I thought we were ordering the large ones that come with the Obama special, and they're like the size of the plate, and I ordered two, so happy that these are more like bite-sized. This place smells amazing. It smells like a movie theater mixed with a bakery. That's so fast. Whoa! She swerved! We stopped by King Roti to grab a quick dessert since we've been eating savory food all day. I'm honestly so full. <laughs> like, it's just. But this looks super fluffy and kind of like Frenchy on the outside. This is another example of French culture merging in with the Vietnamese culture because other Southeast Asian countries don't really have like pastries, especially ones with chocolate on the inside. Come on. Mmm. Mmm. It's like a fluffy version of those snacks that we had on the Mekong River that tastes like um, ice cream cones, but it's like a little fluffier. It's not super dense. It's just like, it's a fluffy ice cream cone. How much to, uh, where is it? Train uh, Street? Train Street. How much to Train, train, train yeah. Street? Uh, yeah. uh, 150. Uh, they you 100? Yeah. Give you 100? Uh, 150 is very cheap here. Yeah. No, I think we're okay. Thank you. 120. Good. Oh, you look so happy. We decided to get one. How can you not? They just look so cute. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. That was terrifying. <laughs> Keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle. Ever since we've been in Vietnam, we have seen these bikes riding around carrying, well, mainly tourists, but some locals too. And I wanted to try one the whole time. And we're leaving in two days and we're finally doing it. I don't know. Everybody started very high. I don't weigh 250. It made me very self-conscious about my weight. <laughs> Our driver doesn't look as happy as us though. <laughs> Alright, we made it. Thank you. Have a Thank good you day. so much. Okay, we made it to the famous Hanoi train stream. It's famous because it's a small alleyway, which is pretty normal here in Vietnam. The one difference is there is an active railroad train track right down the middle. And active, I mean like this train goes like five to six times a day on the weekends. And it is very, very close to all of these restaurants. There's a ton of cafes. So we chose the highest rated one, Railway Cafe. We're just gonna grab a beer and watch the train go by.
coming. The train is here and everybody is getting as far to the side as he can because I'm pretty sure it gets really, really close. Oh my God. The train was really long, so it wasn't just like over like that. You really got to experience the whole thing. Wild. <laughs> Since we were so full from all the food we had earlier today, we ended up staying at the railway cafe for almost two and a half hours. And we got to talking to the owners of the cafe and they started all of this. They showed us a video of this place when they first started out and everybody thought they were crazy. Turns out, really good idea because now everybody else is doing it here. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah. Everything's happening so fast. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I have no idea what just happened. Everything happened so fast. Alicia went to the bathroom, we have drinks, we have noodles, they cut our noodles, there's fish in the pan, they light the pan, they cook the pan. We have food. I don't know if it's the right thing, but this is exactly why Alicia could not leave me alone. <laughs> the name of the restaurant is Cha Ka Feng Long, so I'm guessing this is like the main thing to get here, but it's fish, not sure what kind of fish, with dill and turmeric. Here we go. Oh my god, this is so good. It just flakes in your mouth and it's full of flavor and it's very different than a lot of the dishes we had today. I don't usually hear of dill and turmeric in Vietnamese dishes, but it is very good. And he made it all for us so we know how to eat it, which is really helpful. <laughs> That is really helpful to be honest. And when Alicia said we're having fish tonight, I expected it to be like a full fish, but it's cut up, ready to grill, a very efficient process. This is so good. Hot plates are really popular all over Southeast Asia and probably just Asia in general, but they have small bowls and the big meal in the middle. So you just take a little bit at a time so your meal stays hot the whole time. Genius, and it's kind of like the beer that we had in Brazil. They give you a big bottle and a cooler so it stays cold the whole time and you just pour a little bit. I love the ideas. If you've made it to this point in the video, thank you. The outpour of support for our recent series has been incredible. And there's been something we've wanted to share with you, but we've been waiting for the right time. Yes, we're often exploring new cities and new countries. But the truth is we spend nearly 75% of our time behind a computer creating content. Which means we have much more content than just our YouTube videos. And one of our favorite places to share this extra content is on our Patreon page, where you can find deleted scenes from our videos and even more hilarious bloops. Oh! <laughs> Ow! Oh, my leg! How did I end up with this? <laughs> and we'll send you a handwritten postcard from every single country we visit. So make sure you sign up for Patreon here, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel here. And we'll see you guys in South Korea.